of course you won't blame Canada as well because I mean nobody comes into your house and disorganizes things and then you just sit down and watch <laughs> people welcome back to the canada info channel my name is wolo i am an rcic based in new brunswick canada i was in manitoba still in manitoba love manitoba for life if you are new to this channel please subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you get updates concerning immigrating to canada and life in canada to my old subscribers i want to say a very big thank you and thank you for sticking with me and being loyal and also leaving your comments in the comment section okay so you've seen today's topic which is Canada is cleaning up their immigration mess and this is true. Um, over the years a lot of mess happened and you can't blame the previous immigration ministers because at the time they were you know doing what what was best for Canada. Now realizing that what they did actually caused a lot of mess and the new immigration minister I won't say he's new I mean he's been there for some time now uh, Mac Miller is now trying to clean all the immigration mess of previous years. And of course, you won't blame Canada as well because, I mean, nobody comes into your house and disorganizes things and then you just sit down and watch. You have to take measures to, you know, restructure things. So they are doing a lot of restructuring that uh, will make the Canadian immigration system robust going forward so that people don't take advantage of the immigration system. Um, and as a result of that, some people are being punished along the line. Sadly, I mean, that was what I mentioned in my last video that I feel international students were being punished. But if you look at it critically, these new policies that are coming out were as a result of what has happened in the past. The first incident which I would like to mention was the incident of um, 700 Indian students that came into Canada with fake admission letters. And if there were structures in place, like if the government had put in structures in place to detect fake admission letters, I don't think those 700 Indian students would have been granted um, visas. Sadly, they came in and they finished their program and at the point of applying for permanent residency, that was when IRCC discovered that they actually came into Canada with fake admission letters. This also happened to a Nigerian as well. So, I mean, she came in with an offer of admission from University of Regina only to discover that everything had changed. She had to school somewhere else and finished even with her spouse and her child, a child, a Canadian citizen child, the government still gave her a deportation order. So, you know, when these things happen, of course, they want to put measures in place to, you know, clean the system so that it will not recall, so that people don't take advantage of the system. Then number two reason is the accommodation crisis. Uh, the accommodation crisis was actually peculiar to Ontario. It was not everywhere. It was peculiar to Ontario and it was really, really disturbing to see that um, people or landlords were taking advantage of international students. I would say they were taking advantage of them because I don't understand why landlords were advertising wardrobes, one tiny space wardrobe to international students to, um, to rent to them for, let's say, $600 or $700. And you see it specified in their, on their adverts, you know. So I felt it was very, very disturbing. And apart from that, some international students from India, they went to camp outside, built a tent outside the school, camp outside, you know, calling the school out, saying that there was no accommodation for, this, for them and all of that. When the government sees all these kind of things, of course, they want to put measures in place to restrict um, this kind of incidents from happening, you know. And then the government now said, look, you have to come up with an accommodation plan for your students. If you don't have an accommodation plan, I mean, that means... Um, your school is not big enough to accommodate the number of international students. So, you know, these are the reasons. This is, I feel, number two reason why the government decided to put certain measures in place. The third reason is when international students come in and drop out of school and not even bother going to school, but they switch to work permit. They get, they are able to get a job offer and then switch to work permit. When RSC gives you a visa to come and study, and then at the end of the day, you're not studying, you're working it sends a wrong message to the government that the that means your intention the true intention of actually getting the study permit was not actually to study but to work so this is one of the reason why they are putting all of these measures in place the fourth reason is 
uh, protesting when they get bad grades. And this is also peculiar to the Indians. Some Indians, not all Indians anyway, some Indians were actually protesting because they failed a particular course. And when they did this protest, it was all over social media. So when the government sees all these things happening on social media, it, it sends a wrong message to them that, look, we have to restrict these people from um, actually coming in because they don't really have the capacity to study and get good grades in Canada. The fifth reason is the boom of private career colleges. Private career colleges were not popular before, but all of a sudden they became very popular. And one thing that was very remarkable about them was that you hardly find people from other demographics in private career colleges. You see lots of Indians in private career colleges because they had a system where um, these colleges had connections with employers such that they are promised that once they finish, they'll be able to get the connection to get a job offer, an LMIA job offer, and then the LMIA was booming as well. So, I mean, you go to a private career college and all you see, you only see... 100% of the students are Indians. You will not see one person from Jamaica or Philippines or any other country. All of them Indians, you know. So when the government saw all these things, they, they had to restrict private career colleges as well. Then the sixth reason was students using food banks. I mean, students were expected to be able to fend for themselves, you know, but they started using food banks and then they were putting the information on social media as well. So of course, when the government sees that the students who are supposed to come to Canada to study and fend for themselves, they are busy um, dragging food bank with the poor people of the society. Of course, the government will put measures in place. So you won't um, blame the government for all of this. The last one, which is even a recent one, um, is one student who came in and wanted to go cause chaos in the United States. I won't mention the real word that, you know, of course, that he wanted to do but he wanted to go cause chaos in the United States. So all of this mess, I mean, is making the government put in measures that are very, very restrictive and looks like they are punishing international students. Uh, sadly, you won't blame the government for taking these actions. I mean, if you have a house and you, you invited somebody into your house and the person comes and starts throwing your TV, moving your chairs, scattering your clothes and your plates and all of that you will not sit down and watch the person turn your house upside down you would want to stop the person from continuing the chaos in your house so this is what canada is doing they are trying to stop the chaos that has happened over the immigration minister you know made mention that they are now seeing the results and seeing the impact of the policies they've put in place since the policies are now working very well um, don't blame Canada for cleaning up the immigration mess. That's what I would say. So this is the information I said I'm coming to share. I hope it is a useful information. Thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.